So let me tell you about this um, exchange I heard on the Dave Ramsey show, on the Ramsey show the other day. A woman named Ashley calls in who is a wife and mother of four children, ages, ready for this, four, three, two, and one month, one month old, four, four and under. And she's calling in to ask essentially this question. This is a quote. I'm trying to figure out if I step away from work, if I'm going to financially ruin my family. And I want to tell you about this call mainly because I know for a fact that she is representative of the modern generation of women big time and that there are so many people who are going to be able to relate to this. So here's what's interesting. Well, I'll tell you the part that you're going to relate to or a lot of women will relate to and then the part that you probably won't. The underlying problem is that she earns twice what her husband does. Okay? That's the part that I think will resonate. But there's more to their financial story that is not typical from of most people's situation, I don't believe. And she's in a much better situation to do what she wants to do, which is to stay home. She wants to quit working, basically. Um, but let me tell you about this call. So she and her husband are debt free. They own their home. They own their home outright. They have a three to six month emergency fund and they even own a rental property outright. And again, the problem she thinks is that she earns, well, it's not a problem. I mean, I could see why she would feel this way. She earns double what her husband does and their health insurance is with his work, not hers. So he earns $60,000 and she earns 115. He's part owner of a martial arts business. And so when the Ramsey personalities asked, you know, probed further and asked her some questions like, what is the husband's mindset about this issue? She said, Ashley said that he said, her husband said that they'll be fine no matter what he does, she chooses to do but that he's concerned she will be bored and unfulfilled at home, which is such a cop out. It's such a ridiculous statement in my opinion that is that speaks volumes about that person and the way he thinks or he's been taught to think because nobody would come up with that statement unless they weren't acculturated, unless they had swallowed the cultural narratives that are bogus there's much more there going on than meets the eye. So, and she didn't, she was almost passing on that information as though it's completely removed from what she thinks about what she wants. He was, she was just, she didn't, she didn't add what she feels or what she thinks she would feel, but you could clearly tell like anyone who has four children under four and a full-time job and is the breadwinner of the family, completely overwhelmed, like, get me out of this situation. I want to stop working, which, by the way, is the majority of women that I talk to on a daily and weekly basis. So given what I told you about their finances, I think anybody could step into their story and say, yes, it's doable. Yes, you should do this. This is great. Follow your um, heart. And let's look at the math and make this happen. And given the fact that, like I said, they have this emergency fund, they own their home out, own their home outright. They own a rental home outright. Um, and they're debt free, obviously financially, this is feasible. It was interesting that her husband, long story short, she says, she said basically that her husband's always wanted to do what he's doing with martial arts and he's not going to change that career path. They asked if the career path was going to, you know, if he was going to earn more over time, she said in about a year. So there's all kinds of options financially here. But what I noticed, which is 
something I notice 100% of the time, anytime this subject comes up, is that nobody talks about the needs of children. Nobody does. Nobody, nobody even addresses the significance of her being in her children's lives from the children's point of view, from the babies and toddlers, those four little ones, doesn't even come up. It's what do you want to do? What do you feel is your calling? What is a you, 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 you? And I hear these wives and mothers almost like, you can almost tell them sort of wanting to be told something other than that. That's all they ever get. And you can tell they kind of feel like, is this normal that I feel this way? It just, do other people feel this way to have four children under four and be the breadwinner of my family? Like, is, is it normal for me to want to step out? Well, hell yeah, it's normal. It's not normal for you to be in the boat that you're in. In the ideal world, you're not in that boat from the get-go because you've planned accordingly and knew um, that you would want to be home or you've erred on the side that you would want to be home and you set up the circumstances that would allow that to happen. However, that is not the story for many, many young women today because they, in my opinion, were not steered in the right direction. So they find themselves stuck down the road. So in Ashley's situation, 100% it's doable and she should follow that intuition, that instinct, and, and, and quit her job and figure it out mathematically. So that, to me, that's just a slam dunk. And, and I'm not going to get into how they um, handled it on the Ramsey show. It, it wasn't too bad in this particular case, but it often is bad. I don't like the way they deal with this particular um, dilemma. But this got me to thinking about the larger issue of why people get into this boat to begin with. And as I said, they weren't steered in the right direction to allow um, women to have more choices when the time came that they had children. So that's, that's the main reason. But the larger, more political reason is dot, 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 dot. What do you think? Everybody knows this. Feminism, equality. This idea that men and women are supposed to live identical lives. And I'm saying this concept of equality is ruining marriages and relationships. And this, this gal's story is one of millions of stories that are playing out across this country and outside the country, really in the Western world, everywhere. And the basic issue is this. Attitudes may have changed since the days when husbands brought home the bacon and wives stayed home with the kids, but research actually shows that deviating from conventional gender roles makes both sexes unhappy. But nobody wants to talk about this. There's actual research on this. Karen Kramer and Sunjin Pak at the University of Illinois examined data on nearly 1,500 men and 1,800 women between the ages of 52 and 60 and found that the more women's paychecks increased, the more women reported symptoms of depression. But the opposite effect was found in men. Their psychological well-being was highest when they were the primary wage earners. Quote, the results support the overarching hypothesis. Well-being was lower for mothers and fathers who violated gendered expectations about the division of paid labor and higher for parents who conform to these expectations, said Kramer. Basically, that just means if you have a generally traditional family structure situation, you're going to be happier and have less conflict than you are if you're constantly fighting um, against what's natural for you, as is the case with this gal, Ashley. I mean, I could have told anybody's story. I have tons of stories to tell. They're all similar. Um, it's women being unhappy, doing both, wanting to quit and looking for support and encouragement, even from their own husbands and just flat out not getting it. And that is because of how deeply ingrained in our culture, this concept of equality has become. And here's what's even more interesting about that research. This, the results were true even for couples who had a more egalitarian view of gender roles. So even if you don't, think you subscribe to traditional gender roles, it comes out in your um, patterns and in your, you know, in the um, 
in, in real time, despite how you actually think about it. So modern views notwithstanding then, in other words, men's health took a hit when their earnings shrank. And it's the same, it's the same with the women who are embarking on um, paths that they really didn't realize were going to be a problem down the line. And to me, that that goes back to parenting. You know, if the culture isn't going to teach women what they need to know, then the parents have to. Well, women and men, I should say. So there's plenty of blame to go around. Because the ultimately, the culture's answer to these to findings like this one that I just described is is usually the same, which is that social expectations regarding gender roles are just not up to spot, not up to snuff, right? Gender roles, we've been too slow to res, slow to evolve. If it were just considered more acceptable for men to take care of the kids and women to bring home the paycheck, then there would be no issue. There would be no depression. You know, we just have to raise boys and girls differently and steer them away from what their natural proclivities may be, and all will be right with the world. That's what you hear in the media over and over again. But study after study after study after study prove otherwise. This is another quote from a different study, and I'm going to link all of these studies below for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Quote, feminist ideals, not domestic duties, seem to be what makes wives morose, concedes Megan O'Rourke at Slate. Slate magazine of all places. I mean, this is not a bastion of conservatism. Quote, progressive married women who should be enjoying some or all of the fruits that Betty Friedan lobbied for are less happy, it would appear, than women who live as if Friedan never existed. In other words, women who... Um, men and women who subscribe, again, what I said before, men and women who subscribe to their more gendered proclivities are happier than those who are constantly fighting against it. That's basically what that means. And this may sound surprising or even blasphemous in 2024, but it makes perfect sense. Women and men are different. They're just drastically different. And we have to recognize that and celebrate it. And then so much of this conflict will end. Women, as a rule, are born nurturers. Not all, but most. Their bodies are meant to nurture and to nest. Their sense of well-being is inextricably linked to their relationships, in particular to their relationships with their children, but just relationships in general. Women love and are very uh, in tune with their relationships. And thank God for that. How great is that? Why is that a bad thing? Whereas men are very linear in the way that they operate because let's face it, their bodies don't do what women's do. They can't, they don't spend nine months pregnant each for each pregnancy. They don't um, breastfeed. They're not even in tune with babies in the way that women are. So they're wired differently. They are wired to provide and to protect for their families. That's why each sex tends to be happiest when they're doing what they're literally made to do. I mean, it's really not any more deep or complicated than that. We just have a really hard time accepting it because it goes against popular orthodoxy and nobody wants to say anything that might get them, you know, in trouble. This more gendered, if you want to call it that, approach to marriage and relationships swims with the tide rather than against it, which is why couples who embrace some form of traditional family structure tend to be happier. It doesn't need to look like Ward and June Cleaver. It can include a wife who's employed in some capacity, and it should include husbands who are hands-on at home. We're not talking about strict gender roles, like you've been taught to believe, you know, um, were a thing in the past that everybody was so miserable doing. You can still have a basic structure that's traditional and have some overlap there. I mean, when I say you can, I mean, obviously you can do whatever you want. I'm saying... To have a traditional family structure doesn't mean it's going to be so rigid. That's what I'm trying to say. And none of this is to say that no married couple on the planet can successfully navigate a role reversal. It is only to say that it's very rare. The bottom line is that social attitudes may have changed, but human nature hasn't. And those who accept rather than fight against this are the folks who have less conflict and more joy in their lives. 
So that's all I have for you guys today. I'll be back soon. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. See you next time.